Hello, welcome back to the Balance Patch PC. Uh, we are now in top eight of the bracket. Uh, I'm Chris. Hi, I'm Anthony. It's good to good to be here. Good to be back. Good to be good back. To, yeah, good to be back. The it's dynamic been, duo is back for this Balance Patch PC. It's uh, been, a, been a year. Yeah, last time we duoed was April during the Cash Cup, I believe. Yep. That was a that was a heck of a long time ago. <laughs> Ready. Uh, back and ready to ready to go again more casting <laughs> yep <laughs> i'm so ready i'm so hyped so uh, for our first top eight match we have stefan mott pokemon wellspring also Don with cliff Don. that's pretty cool yeah so we've got so we've got stefan mott running a okapon wellspring tornadus incarnate uh clefairy incineroar golden go and uh lando i uh um, lando i scary substitute especially yeah the the Clefairy is really interesting here. Um, I think on this on this composition, Moonblast uh, for some offense. Yeah, because this is like, I would say the other five is like a pretty kind of standard, uh, you know, Reg F team. Yeah. Um, maybe not the items. Looking at that Figgy Berry, <laughs> um, but he's a little hungry, you know. <laughs> um, I think it's really interesting taking these kind of like um, standard like kind of metamons, adding Clefairy onto the team, getting that friend guard. Uh, you know, bonus. You can just eat stuff up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It can, it can throw off a lot of calcs. Exactly. And uh, here we have John Lyons on the other team. I'll let you read that off if you want. Sure. So I actually faced John for my winning in, and I got my butt kicked. So <laughs> we're gonna go through it. Uh, Rillaboom, Ogre Pond, Wellspring, Fluttermane, King Gambit, Gouging Fire, and Landorus Incarnate. And a note, a really cool thing to notice about John's team. Terragrass Rillaboom, very offensive while being def very defensive with that Assault Vest item, as well as Focus Sash Fluttermane. That is really interesting. Yeah, it's like you double target normally, or you're gone. Yeah, normally with that like a kind of Icy Wind set, you want you see booster energy to get the booster speed so you can you know be the fastest thing on the field. Um, you know, after Prankster, of course, yeah. uh, and getting those Icy Winds off. But uh, John opted for uh, Focus Sash here. Maybe to try to get uh, you know a few more icy wins off than he normally would be able to. Um, another thing to note also on the gouging fire set is uh, flare blitz yep. instead of heat crash. That so, was a scary revelation when I looked at the team sheet. <laughs> yeah, you're always getting that uh, c like consistent flare blitz damage. There's no variable damage, um, so it, it could hurt in some matchups, but it could be really, really good in others. Oh, definitely, so especially we'll, with that howl boost. Yeah, that is hurting. So we'll have to see how that plays out here. Uh, so we see John leading with the Fluttermane and Landorus, and we see Spamot leading with the Landorus and Cinero. Uh The Intimidate not really mattering here, but you do get the Faco pressure onto the uh, onto John's uh, Landorus. So I think this is a scary position for both players because I don't think either of us mentioned John has Terra Fire on his side. I did not notice that. And. That tripped me up the first time I saw it because in a gouging fire mirror, you can't really heat crash a fire type, especially when it's a little bit heavier, like Landorus Incarnate, and especially when it's a fire type. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be doing a lot less damage than what is originally right. intended. Right. It definitely does hurt the the Lando mirror matchup. Oh but yeah. If you have the tools outside of it to you know help take care of the Landorus, um, we see here uh, Landorus will go for protect. Uh, if an Icy Wind did come out into that Landorus, it would be doing a lot of damage. Uh, we do see Fake Out coming into the Landorus, and uh, Flamine does go for the Icy Wind, but uh, uh, Stefan's Landorus did protect that. We're going to be dropping the Incineroar speed. Not too important, really. Incineroar is you know, more of a slow Pokemon, so it's not really... Uh, a slow little lap cat, if you will. Yeah, so that speed drop isn't too important. Um, Good so thing to note about John's team, too. Having that Focus Ash onto Fluttermane also gives you access to Taunt and Protect instead of regular choice spec sets or in fact, <laughs> Unless you're me. Yeah. <laughs> you run specs Taunt. <laughs> exactly. It's like it's texts like that that make Fluttermane so versatile. Absolutely. Um, so we do know that this Incineroar on Stefan Mod side is minus one speed, but that doesn't really matter. Uh, we haven't revealed if one Lando is faster than the other, so let's find out in this turn. Swapping from Stefan's side. 
a fairy coming in. So he's gonna be able to get that friend guard up in the land of this. Blue Blast coming out from front of me, doing just around 50%. Stefan's Landorus goes first. Ooh, Ooh and the a critical nice hit. Crit. Brings uh, Fl uh, Fluttermane down to its sash. Ooh. You see the Sludge Bomb coming out, taking care of that Clefairy. So you don't get that friend guard anymore, and Landorus is now susceptible. And that was a great play by Fluttermane. That, uh, that Earth Power going into the Prospect of Incineroar, nah, we don't want to do that. Let's Sludge Bomb it instead. <laughs> We, we see uh, Tornadus coming out from Stefan, maybe trying to set up a mid-game Tailwind here to uh, try to guarantee that his uh, Lander Landorus outspeeds uh, John's Landorus. So we do see the last four Pokemon for John. And we do see <coughs> Stefan's last Tornadus, as well as having the similar still on the back. But the question is, what do you do in this position if you're trying to switch out Fluttermane, the Icy Wind? Um, it, it's really going to come down to who's faster, pretty much. Yeah, because yeah, Tornadus could easily go for a Tailwind, and then the uh, Stefan's Lander is, uh, easily picks up the Fluttermane, uh, which is what we're going to actually see here. Yep. Um, so, so we'll have to see what John's Lander is going to do in this situation. Uh, I would imagine a Sludge Bomb, or uh, oh, oh, never mind, uh, we'll see a, a Terror Blast, blast. <laughs> going into the uh, Landorus. Um, doing some, doing a good chunk of uh, damage. Yeah, that did a sizable amount. So we're gonna see who John wants to bring out here in the back. And it looks like he is bringing out the Ogre Pond. So that is gonna look really good into the, um, that is gonna look really good into the Landers here. Um, assuming the Tornadus doesn't get any Bleak Wind. The Tornadus could easily get a Bleak Wind off here, and Landorus gets a Sludge Bomb off into the Ogre Pond. Um, so we'll have to see if uh, Stefan goes for that. Um, it looks like John is considering the Terra to try to avoid that uh, poison damage. Um, so we do see a prospect of Terra from John's side. What does this target? I would, imagine, I would imagine. I would imagine this. So we're gonna see the Terra Water. Uh, he, the Ogre Pond is gonna shed that poison weakness. So if there is a Bleak Wind and Sludge Bomb coming from Stefan's side. The Ogre Pond should be able to survive. That. Terra coming out from John's Ogre Pond, getting that beautiful blue mask. Especially with that defensive mask, I think. Oh yeah. Um, it, it'll definitely be able to survive whatever this Landers and Tornadoes are gonna. A uh, sub coming out. out. Oh yeah, we do see a sub coming out. Ooh. The lander is expecting probably an Ivy Cudgel into that slot. A bleak one um, coming out. So we'll have to see if this bleak one hits the Ogre Pond. I'm so sorry. It, do it does it does miss on that Ogre <laughs> I Pond shouldn't have said anything. Um, so we're gonna see the Ivy Cudgel go Ivy into the tornado. Ignoring that uh, substitute that Lander has set up. Um, Good thing to note, Tailwind is still up. So I believe. It's up for two more turns, yes, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so we're going to have to see how John plays around this. Um, Both players in very interesting positions. Both yeah, down definitely. one very prominent Pokemon on their team, uh, but also having chip damage on each other's Pokemon. So let's let's find out what each other does, because either one is in a scary position. It, it looks like... So John's going to switch out the landers for King Gambit, um, and... I think I think this makes sense. Uh, like I was saying earlier, the Ogre Pond isn't going to die to, or uh, get knocked out to um, uh, uh, Sludge Bomb Bleak Wind Storm. Yeah. Um, should be okay. It, it should be safe. <laughs> should be ripe and ready um, for battle. So we'll, we'll have to see if uh, John chooses to get rid of the substitute or maybe pick up the KO on Landorus. We do see a Terra Poison on that Landorus from Stefan Mott, but it Ooh. does go into that King Gambit. That was a very nice switch. Um, we do see the Bleak Wind come out. Next on both this time. Doesn't do much damage at all. No speed drop. No speed drop on yeah, that King Gambit. Yeah, going to come Ooh. out into the Tornadus and pick it up. The Tornadus will go down this turn. That leaves Stefan Mott with just Incineroar in the back, and that means that this King Gambit is going to get that Defiant moves. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And... Uh, Incineroar staring down this Terra Water Ogre Pond is not looking very good for it. 
Um, even at minus one, this is going to do a lot of damage into that Incineroar slot, even with that health. Yeah, two two Pokemon on Stefan's mod that are critically weak. Or, sorry, uh, Landris is Terra Poison, I think. But uh, still, that Incineroar. Yeah. Uh, very, very threatened by the That Yoga damage Prime. is still scary, no matter what. <laughs> and we spiky see John going for the Spiky out. Shield, and I think he clicks. He did protect. He's scouting out that fake out. Um, Good thing to know, too. Tailwind does end this turn for Stefan. Which I don't think is a huge issue for John um, because Ogrepon can still outspeed the Incineroar. Um, and you're not really worrying too much about the Lando. Uh, I mean, the King Gambit is for sure. Yeah. Um, that King Gambit is not happy about that Earth power that's probably going to be clicked onto that slot. Thinking about what he's going to do here in this situation. There is also a possibility that John could be trained to outspeed this lander, so it's definitely possible if a Sucker Punch and an Ivy Cudgel could pick up this lander slot, but we don't know that actually. Because of all these different interactions that we've seen so far, we don't know if this is faster yeah, than if, if lander is. Yeah, if the Sucker Punch can get through the substitute. Uh, which we don't, we, we do see the landers protecting here, um, but I, I don't think John can do that anyway. Um, we're gonna see the follow me, follow me coming out, uh, probably Jump. expecting an earth power uh, from the landers trying to redirect that towards it. Um, it's in order goes for the knockoff, it does a pretty sizable chunk, and we see the cow fleet coming out too. So we're not really doing that much. Um, knockoff doing a sizable amount to that ogre pond. I think yeah, that was the, the knockoff did a lot. Actually. 50 to 60 damage. Which might put it in range for something like a Sludge Bomb, now that Landorus is Terra Poison. Right. Even though Ogre Pond is terrestrialized with that plus one special defense boost, the range that Incineroar just put it in might be enough for a KO. I'll have to see here. So he goes for the Sucker Punch, and let's see if it's enough to get rid of that substitute. And it is. Ooh. Let's see who's faster. Uh, we see John Zogrepon go for the Ivy Cudgel into the Incineroar. Whoa. Most likely going to pick it up, and it will. So okay. Stefan is left just with his Landorus, and we'll see who he targets here. It's going to go be the Sludge Bomb into, uh, yeah, Ogrepon. Um, <laughs> and it's going to pick it up, but I believe... Um, I believe Landorus is still in the back for John as well. Oh, you're, you're right, you're right. So yeah, John does have the Landorus in the back, so this should be... Um, this should be locked in for John here, uh, as he can just go for the Earth Power. With access to Sucker Punch, too. Yeah, I Sucker Punch and the Earth John Power. Has this game I unlocked. think it's pretty locked up here. Okay. Yeah, we do see the forfeit from Stefan, and John will be taking this 1 0 so far. So that is critical info building from Stefan. Anthony and Chris jump scare, by the way. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, Stefan does have that critical information. Hey, John's Ogre Pond is faster, without Tailwind, of course, yep. than my Landorus. So I think I think when Stefan lost that Clefairy after that switch in, I think that really hurt him there. Um, not being able to have that front guard uh, or redirection, really. I think the redirection would have uh, helped a lot there. That friend guard buff is a lot, and yes. I think a lot of yes. I think a lot of players underestimate that right now. Yeah, you don't see a lot of uh, friend guard right now. Um, it's not as big as it was kind of back in uh, regulation D and E, uh, where you saw a lot of Clefairy, Definitely. or just you know friend guard Pokemon. Clefairy, um, yeah, uh, kind of akin to a Moongusar Shifu, mm -hmm. but not so much. You do get that extra defense and special def uh, special defense buff with the Clefairy on the field, with right. access to Life Dew, Helping Hand, Moon Blast, like we do see on Stefan's side. Uh, yeah, Clef is just like a support monster. It's like the OG mascot of Pokemon <laughs> is scarier than the actual mascot of Pokemon. Yep. Yep. And it's I think it's a scary thing, especially paired with something like setup, like we see on mons like Goldengo, or if you have Swords Dance on Ogre Pond and you like being super risky and super cool, like one of the cool kids. <laughs> hey, by the way, I have a plus one special defense and plus two attack Ogre Pond Wellspring. And now you can't do anything about it because I have redirection. And I'm wondering if uh, John is considering a new readjustment here, um, maybe evaluating whether that King Gambit was super useful or not. It, it was weak to a lot of what Stefan brought. 
and I'm wondering if uh, John might kind of realize that and you know rethink bringing it. Maybe it maybe it helped him more than I'm I'm thinking. But maybe there's some better plays that John wants to actually carry out versus what they did in the first game. Right. So we're gonna get started on game two here. We see Stefan lead with the Incineroar Ogre Pond, and we see John with Fluttermane and King Gambit catching that um, Incineroar lead from Stefan, getting that Defiant boost. So that we're gonna plus one is already scary. Yeah, he's but we know Fluttermane can't be fake outed. Yep, that's a word now. Fake outed. I just made that up. <laughs> so we're gonna have to see how Stefan plays around this. Um, see if he goes for maybe the fake out onto King Gambit, um, the Ogre Pond. You know, has the tools to take care of Fluttermane. We're gonna see if uh, he chooses to go for that option or not. An interesting thing to note about John's Fluttermane as well: it is Focus Sash with Moonblast and Icy Wind, but it also does have that Taunt option. So taunting Ogre Pond to prevent anything from like a Follow Me to a Spiky Shield would also help. It would help a lot, uh, shutting down that redirection. We do see John going for Protect on his Fluttermane. Uh, Surprisingly enough, oh, no wow. fake out coming out from uh, Incineroar. Or uh, Leech just going into that protect, too. Yeah, so John calling the, the no fake out, but we do get a Flare Blitz. Ooh, almost. Big damage. Almost getting the KO on King Gambit. And we're going to see King Gambit go for the Kowtow please onto Ogre Pond. Almost. And it lives on one. That is a scary Ogre Pond. Two very, very close calls on uh, both sides. Whew. Nail Biter, amount of HP from both sides. <laughs> Oh, uh, a good thing to note, this Incineroar obviously took a lot of chip damage from that Flare Blitz. But now we also have John's side, where we don't have, I don't think we have access to setup. But even still, we're now at plus one. And Sucker Punch is just going to hurt. It is. It is. Even, even the resisted Sucker Punch at plus one uh, does, you know, a considerable amount of damage. Uh, we're going to see John go to Ice Wind, pick up that Overcon, and... Uh, once again, lower the speed on the Incineroar, not that that matters that much. Uh, more just picking up the Ogre Pond and doing a little damage to the Incineroar. Um, although, actually, I wonder if... Wow, we do have speed! Yeah, it does, it does allow the King Gambit to outspeed the Incineroar um, and do a you know, good amount of damage onto that. Um, knock off bringing the Fluttermane <laughs> down to its Sash. Wow, okay! Um, I did not expect that amount of damage from Incineroar. <laughs> That would explain why Flare Bliss did so much. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so we see Stefan bringing those Tornadoes here, giving him, again, that uh, kind of mid-game Tailwind option if he needs it. Um, which, in this case, he might, because the King Gambit is outspeeding the Incineroar. Um, so we'll have to see what John opts to do here. Another thing to note as well, neither player has Terrastralized yet. So we could see one upcoming in the next few turns or so. We don't know though, but that focus sash is knocked off of the Fluttermane. So I mean, I, see, <laughs> it I did it did use the focus <laughs> sash, yeah. and then uh, nothing ended up getting knocked off. We do see the moon blast going to the Incineroar. I don't believe that critical hit no, really mattered. I, I think um, it's... And we'll have to see what this tornado does. It does go for the frequent storm, storm misses, and it misses the Fluttermane, flutter. and it does pick it up does the King pick up. Gambit. I I honestly wasn't sure if that was going to pick up the King Gambit or not. Um, That's the way of life, gambling. <laughs> So we do see the uh, Flutter a uh, bit lucky to survive here. Um, By the skin jo of its teeth. <laughs> John deciding who he wants to bring out here um, onto the field. So Stefan is down to their last two Pokemon. And we, we do, do see that it is Landorus, that scary offensive threat. And we and do I see think Ogre Pond coming out. I think John is in a pretty good position here. Um, although, like you were saying, the Terra hasn't been burnt on either side yet. Uh, so we could see the Landorus go for a Terra to avoid the the IC, or the IV Cudgel uh, super effective damage. Which um, is scary for any Landorus. But even if it does Terra, it, it'll still do a good amount of damage. Oh, yeah. Most likely a two-hit KO. Especially with Ogre Pond and its, it's beautiful mass. <laughs> so we do see John go for the Terra Water here onto the Ogre Pond. Gaining the mask that shines brilliantly, plus raising that special defense, which will be helpful against both of Stefan's Pokemon. Yep. As both of them are special attackers, Ogrepon will be taking not that much damage for both of them. We do see a Terra from Stefan's side as well. I would is imagine this, this is the Landorus. Landorus. Yes. yes. So we're going to see the Landorus go Terra Poison to avoid that Ivy Cudgel super effective damage. But like I was saying, 
I don't, I don't think it'll be a one-hit knockout, no. even with a Poison Terra, but it will definitely <laughs> most likely be a two-hit knockout. We it do will see, do an amount. <laughs> <laughs> it will do an amount. We do see Stefan go for the Tailwind here, uh, comes out. allowing Landorus to go faster and uh, take out the Fluttermane with a Sludge Bomb. And uh, we're going to see who the Ogopon targeted here. Let's see I imagine that Landorus slot. That is a scary Tarasalized Pokemon, and it, it does. The Landorus. I have Pepper coming out. Ooh, Ooh, just barely missing the knockout here. Another good thing to note at the very end of this game, Stefan's or Landorus is now impacted by Earth Power from John's Landorus, now that it's terrestrialized. Mm -hmm. That does not apply with Tornadus, obviously, as it's still a pure flying type, it does not terrestrialize. But we do know that Tailwind is up for Stefan's side, so yeah. maybe some RNG could happen here. Yeah, maybe Stefan's we'll Pokemon will be moving first here, uh, so we'll see. I'd imagine the Tornadus is probably going to try to throw out a Bleak Wind Storm. Um, I don't know... Yeah, the Landers does not have Sansor Storm on Stefan's side, so he's definitely going to go for um, a uh, single attack here. Uh, but uh, John does get the uh, double protect on his side. Um, trying Stephon to scout does not out. have enough for a substitute either, which is another good Yeah, he can't set up substitute. Um, just trying to scout out uh, who's... Who the Landers is trying to target, also trying to burn some turns of Tailwind. Um, two turns of Tailwind. You see, there are two turns of Tailwind left. So John opting to go for the Earth Power onto the opposing Landorus, uh more than enough yeah. to pick up <laughs> pick up the knockout on maybe, that. Maybe, just maybe. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we'll have to see how Stefan reacts to this. So I think, obviously we're in a uh, final game scenario, anything could happen. Crit, anything. poison. It that does more does than half like to the Ogre Pond, which I'm honestly... Wow. We can bring it down to about 25% on the Ogre Pond. Ivy Cuddle coming out onto the... Uh, yeah, Tornadus. Um, Almost picking it up, so much and then the Earth Power will be coming out onto the Landris, and uh, the Overpawn and Landris should be able to pick up the Tornadoes from here, um, barring knock on wood, uh, a crit, <laughs> a bleak wind crit, um, should be more enough to pick up that. I think there's one turn of Tailwind still left on uh, Stefan's side. But we don't see John going for that double protect to uh, get that last turn of Tailwind away, but we do see the forfeit coming out from Stefan. And John Lyons will be your winner of the first round of Top Cut Top 8. 2-0. Uh, that was very well played for both trainers. That was I very really well liked watching that. Losing to John felt good. Because <laughs> it was a gouging mirror, and I love gouging. I'm a gouging fanatic. But like... Oh, did so hey, did Sonic win? Sorry. Genesis <laughs> is on. Okay. So... Uh, super odd. Uh, oh, a rap? Okay. So we'll be right back with top four. Everyone's done. Have fun. Be safe. We'll be, we'll right be back. back.